Here's our first outtake from the main video, and it explores your responses to the question regarding what you understand by the term sexual health. What do you understand by the term sexual health? Thanks for giving so many great responses throughout. Sadly, I don't understand some of those not uh, written in English, but for the rest of them, you will see as we go through these slides that there are different themes appearing throughout. Some of them are to do with like feeling good, feeling confident, um, looking at individuals themselves, but as well as the wider aspects, such as sexual thoughts and being without frustrations, it says here. That being without frustration on the last slide again taps into some of the other issues that are building up. So it's great to see that you're considering sexual health, not just from the point of view of contraception or reproductive health or sexual infections, as so many people consider it, but you are looking at what's often called um, the psychosexual as well. So looking how the sexual elements of our lives impact on our psychological well-being. That alles good functioned. Have I pronounced that correctly? I wonder. I won't try some of the others, I promise you. This is lovely. What's really interesting to me as I look at your responses from different countries around the world is that so many of you are focusing in on the sexual well-being side of this and certainly not on the sexual illness side, which is what some countries tend to do. And look how some of them are looking at you as individuals. So somebody has written exploring yourself, certainly lots of stuff about sexual pleasure and um, consent knowing what you want in sex and what you want to happen and um, lots of stuff around safety coming in as well so looking after ourselves and one of the things you might want to consider is when we talk about sexual infections look how um, it's usually abbreviated as STI sexually transmitted infections but that gives the impression that well someone has given it to me and I had no control over this but if you turn that turn around and call it sexually acquired infections, SAIs, people are going to say, well, what do you mean by that? So you've got the opportunity then to educate them and say, well, look, if you want to, uh, if you don't want sexual infections yourself, you must look after yourself. Yes, yeah, so somebody's got STDs or STIs. So especially in, uh, in American publications, they often talk of STD, sexually transmitted disease. The international term is usually STI, sexually transmitted infection. A number of your responses are also bringing out implications for consent as well. Because look how many cultures around the world or people within cultures often do not have the capacity uh, to give or to withhold consent. That's a really important issue. And also, lots of you are talking about uh, um, sexual pleasure. From the notions of sexual pleasure, even if you check one of these uh, uh, responses here, saying feeling good in your own body. And of course, people who have low self-esteem may not feel good in their own bodies. So from a sexual health point of view, especially a safer sex point of view, it's really important to check out um, a person's feelings about their own self-esteem and their well-being. It's lovely to see on this slide an integration of the body and mind um, and sexual health throughout the whole body. And that includes exploring oneself and a healthy relationship between oneself and others, but also internally with ourselves. I would be careful about using the word normal as in normal relationships, because the opposite of normal or the opposite of natural is sometimes used in negative ways. Look, someone said mental and physical health. That's fantastic. Because when you are talking about a person's holistic being, we're not just physical, we're not just mental. There's more to us as well. And that's why it's really important, because sometimes there can also be psychosomatic illnesses or even somatopsychic illnesses. So somebody might have a physical condition and here it says counselling look. So somebody might have a physical condition that's stressing them so badly, giving them anxiety or worries or concerns 
that it's inhibiting them as people and especially as sexual beings. These responses are building up so well now to show a real connection between oneself and with others. So a clear approach that you're taking um, to sexual health, and as I mentioned right at the beginning, it not to do with sexual illness. This is a really positive way that you're approaching this. A really important message on this slide is where somebody has written the power to say no. Obviously there's a lot of uh, material that we can study around the whole notion of consent, but look at the way that so many people with uh, uh, throughout the world have not got the ability to consent and have not got the ability to say no. So whether it's based on age, abilities, genders, really important here. And finally, this slide, and somebody has written here about accepting one's sexual orientation. That's really important, and we'll cover that in a later video within this series. Also, somebody's written One Night Stand. Of course, so much about um, sexual practice between people is very, very important, and lots of it often doesn't get spoken about. So it's wonderful that somebody has mentioned this, so at least we can address it. This is the end of your feedback for the first Mentimeter section of our lecture presentation. If you close this video now and move on to the next one.